Welcome to Mars in the Unreal Engine 5. This is Jezero Crater right here. And we've got hundreds of miles of explorable terrain here. And over here, we've got a Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter in the exact location where they landed on Mars in real life. This is actually all NASA data, which was gathered to help the rover figure out where to land. So this stuff is true to life. And over there, we've got a SpaceX Starship just hanging out, getting ready to unload humans and cargo. And over here's my car, Blackbird, good old Prius, gotta have one when you're out exploring the solar system. For context, watch this video. And uh, over here, looks like just more mountains. Yeah, I don't see anything else. Still pretty cool though, huh? And if I come out of game mode here and fly away at a high rate of speed, you can see that, yeah, this isn't just some tiny little corner of traversable landscape. Like this is eight kilometers across in this section and 281, I think, kilometers across in this larger section, which is a bit lower resolution because instead of coming from local data sets, which are super high resolution, it comes from a global data set, which is still pretty high resolution. So this is the, the height map that we're using. This is the image map that we're using. And this is the global image map. And this is the global color map. All of this stuff is available for free on the internet. The tough part is formatting it in a way that Unreal can read and that doesn't take ages to regenerate for a new area or crash your computer entirely. To do it, I wrote this huge code base in order to take these massive files. Like look at this, this one, this is the global data set. It's 106,000 pixels wide. And this is not uncommon. The lunar data sets, as mentioned in my previous video, are also like equally gigantic. But anyway, this code in this Jupyter notebook, which is backed by custom image manipulation, math manipulation, and image reprojection code, as well as a number of incredibly amazing, powerful open source libraries. It takes those input images that are ridiculously huge and it formats them into a reprojected orthographic view of the exact location that you're looking for and that you wanna show in the Unreal Engine. These are all tools that I've built to visualize every planet in the solar system with the highest fidelity possible, all for the planet series that I'm currently writing. And landscapes like this one are gonna be crucial to that because I don't wanna just talk in theory about what we've discovered on Mars or even just show images that we've taken of the other planets. I wanna go out there and show you firsthand on the ground what it feels like to be on another planet. So what we're seeing here is the totally zoomed out 281 kilometers wide image centered on exactly the location where the Perseverance rover is right now. And then down here, we have a version of the height map which has the curvature baked into it so that when I fly out all the way completely, you can see that all of this terrain actually has curvature to it. It follows the exact curvature of Mars. And you can see here why having the curvature baked into the landscape is so important. Because as we fly across this hundreds and hundreds of kilometers wide landscape, something very far in the distance starts to poke its head out. And as we approach it, it gets taller and taller until we realize that this thing is huge. And not only that, but you can't even see the top of it because once you get close to it, you realize that what you thought was a mountain was only the first stair step up to a plateau where then there's even a higher and higher growth of this protrusion from the surface. This is Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system. And up at the top, you can even see the detail of the caldera. Now you might be asking yourself, how does this differ from something like Space Engine, which is a super awesome space simulator where you can go to every planet in the solar system and procedurally generated stars and planets all throughout the cosmos. Super, super cool game. I've had so much fun with this thing throughout, throughout the years, but it has a core limitation, which is the size of your hard drive. Most people don't wanna download these massive 22, 50, 60 gigabyte files just for a particular area of a planet. So 
they find a middle ground where you're not exploring landscapes that are this detailed in the real solar system, but you do get to explore those sorts of landscapes on the procedural planets. But beyond resolution, the other thing that's just amazing about doing this in the Unreal Engine is you can tell really cool stories. Stories that would have had crazy high budgets in the past. You're now only really limited by the amount of time it takes to build a scene. And even that is way faster than it's ever been. The rendering times of these things are able to happen in mostly like real time. We can change the lighting of this entire scene in real time. Get some nice long shadows for the Martian sunset. And of course the atmosphere is completely customizable as well. I can change the height of the atmosphere, which changes the colors that we end up seeing at the surface. I can change the thickness of the atmosphere so that maybe we're not on Mars anymore. Maybe we're on uh, the surface of Venus instead of Mars. And of course the colors are all simulated here. So this is accurate to what we might see on a planet like that. And then obviously we can detail the surface not just with meshes, but also with things like decals, which can add some surface detail that can help tell a story. Like for instance, this blast decal. Maybe a good thing to put underneath where the rover landed, because of course the, the rocket engines would have made a big blast radius around it. And so maybe, so maybe I'll, I'll spread this around like this. You know, that's just a very coarse, quick way of doing it. And you can see there's actually footprints in here because I was using this for the Tranquility Base animation that I created to simulate what it might look like on the moon right now at the Apollo 11 landing site. Links in the description. But we can also add, for instance, maybe some clouds. Bam. These clouds look pretty trash on my computer because I have a, a pretty old graphics card. Typically the, the clouds on Mars are high altitude, very thin and wispy. So maybe I can modify this a little bit. Whoa, there's like, here's maybe what an overcast sky might look like on Mars. That's pretty fun. I'm totally bu butchering this because I don't fully understand the cloud system in Unreal at the moment. Okay, so that looks like terrible. Um, it definitely leads to some interesting effects. <laughs> Let me set all this back to the default. And not just clouds, but maybe in the future we could add some particle effects to this. Maybe we could have dust devils because we know dust devils are highly prevalent on the Martian surface. And ultimately one thing I'd love to do is make all the texture here at the surface, which currently is just sort of this rocky texture from uh, mega scans. I'd like to drive these close to detail. I call the micro textures based on geologic maps of Mars that we currently have and also just albedo maps of how bright different features are on Mars. That way we can get at least a rough approximation of what the close-up surface detail really might look like. Now before we go any further I want to acknowledge that there are these data packs online that you can get of say 32k images of Mars for a not ridiculously cheap amount of money. And I just want to point out that all of these are based on data that is publicly available. You're paying for it with your tax dollars. So that's partly why I wanted to make this landscape generation code because I feel like not only can you get cooler results with doing it in a localized way like this and you can actually explore the surface, but it's also way cheaper to do. All of this code that makes this possible in the, the Jupyter Notebook that I just showed you is available on my Patreon currently for patrons who give $10 and up. That's only because I can't support myself doing this right now. But as soon as we get to a thousand patrons, all of this code and the whole code base will be open sourced. I'll be able to maintain this code and actually make sure it works for everybody. <laughs> it makes kind of sense why people charge huge amounts of money for this stuff because the real tricky part is taking all of that data, which is in exotic formats and are ridiculously huge files. And then you have to reformat that into a, a compacted format that Unreal Engine can read and it won't just completely crash every time you try and load it in. So the opportunities for fun here are just absolutely endless. I mean, one thing that's very low hanging fruit that I haven't even done yet is like duplicating this starship. Maybe, maybe we'll have three of them and bringing in some sort of model of a habitation or a, you know, a Mars base and, and sticking it here on the ground. And all of a sudden now you're enabled to create a story on the Martian surface.
in a setting that makes you not just imagine what it might be like to be on Mars, but to feel it. And the opportunities for learning and education are also huge here. I mean, if we go fly over to where the Mars rover is right now, let's zoom in. It's so we've sort of got this outcrop, this outcrop, and this crater. I think I'll kind of use those three to triangulate. So currently, the Perseverance rover is hanging out over here. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny compared to everything else. That's crazy. Look at those starships out there in the distance. That's pretty spectacular. What a sight. What a imagination that that gets going, right? And the Ingenuity helicopter is kind of like on the other side of these dunes over here, just south of this little outcrop. So probably right about here somewhere. And so here we go. All of a sudden, we've got the Ingenuity helicopter, the Perseverance rover out there in the distance. Maybe we'll make a quick camera shot just to get them both in frame. Oh, that's so cool. So you can see the, the rover out there. And then, you know, maybe we can rack focus down here to the Ingenuity helicopter. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Those 3D models are, by the way, completely free and open source as well. They're coming straight off of the NASA website. Here's the Ingenuity helicopter, and here's the per Perseverance rover. And I'll put those links in the description as well so you can have fun with them. So like, you know, we could use this as a way of exploring where is the Ingenuity helicopter right now and what is it doing on Mars? What are these outcrops made of? And what, what have we learned about the history of these particular outcrops in Jezero Crater so far? And what's with this freaking hill over here, by the way? <laughs> like, it's just chilling out here, almost like exactly like a mesa, a uh, black mesa. <laughs> and maybe the thing that makes me the most excited about all this is just the opportunity to feel what it feels like to be on another planet. If I change this lighting direction and start to get a Martian sunset, you know, we can see that blue sunset vibe that we've seen from the rovers that have sent back sunset images from the surface. And I don't know, it's just something really special to feel about. What does it feel like to be an earthling, a human on another planet? All of the tools that make this possible, this Python code and the back end that makes it work, like I said earlier, is available for my patrons and will be open sourced once we get to 1000 patrons, which at that point I'll be able to maintain it and make sure that it works for everybody. In short term, what I'd really like to do is make this code this this currently Jupyter notebook written in Python into sort of like an editor extension like it could be a window in the Unreal Editor so that you don't need to go back and forth between Python to bring in data and there could just be like a drop down list of all of the highest resolution scans of the Martian surface that have yet been taken and you can just stream them straight into your Unreal project. That's what I'd like to do in the short term. In the long term, what would be really cool and something that I think is possible is to do something like a Microsoft Flight Simulator type thing where all of this landscape, and no matter where you go on whatever planet in the solar system, is streamed in from an online server so that, first of all, you don't need to store hundreds of terabytes of data on your computer, but you can just stream it in for wherever you are in that particular moment. But anyway, that's gonna do it for me here today with my Starships, my Prius, <laughs> the NASA rover and helicopter, and this welcoming astronaut. Um, and definitely nothing else out here, but rocks and dirt and maybe traces of, uh, you know, ancient life, who knows? If you enjoyed this video, please hit a like, hit a subscribe, share it with your friends, share it on Reddit, share it on social media, whatever. Do the things, you know the things to do. <laughs> and if you wanna support the Planet series and this kind of code development, and you wanna get your hands on this, feel free to check out the Patreon, links in the description. And until next time, I'll see you in the universe.